Our next project is a product advertisement. This would be an advertisement for print, something that you would see in a magazine or perhaps on a billboard. Um, I have some student examples here. So we're going to start today by just looking at single products and then we're going to be adding um, different elements to them like text, logos, brushes, and simple backgrounds. We started out this lesson by talking about the principles of design, emphasis, balance, repetition, unity, contrast, um, all of those elements that we looked at in the video. So I'm going to jump over to Photoshop and start to assemble um, an advertisement, a print ad. So I found this um, Beats by Dre headphones. I made sure it was a high resolution image. I purposely found one with a solid colored background because I can very easily go in with my magic wand, select certain areas. So Shift adds to a selection. So if I hold on Shift, I can add to my selection there with the magic wand. Now I have all the white parts selected. I'm going to select inverse, which is opposite, to get the headphones. And then I'm going to grab my move tool and move the headphones into my new document. I, I created a new document um, for print um, that I'm going to be putting all these elements in. All right, so I've got my headphones in there. So the next thing I'm going to do, and I don't need to worry about where this is going to go just yet. I'm going to grab my layers out so I can see where my layers are. I'm going to create a layer to put some background in, right? I don't want to use a photograph. Um, photographs are not used very often in advertisements because they can be distracting. So here's my colors here. So here's black. Let's, I, you know what? I'm going to have a, just a solid black background. I'm going to use my paint bucket for that. I'm going to use my paint bucket to get a solid black background. That'll be one option. Let me turn that eyeball off. Let me grab another layer here. This is another layer. In this layer, I'm going to put a gradient. All right, how the gradient works is this. Let's say I picked two colors here. So notice how I clicked on that box and then it brought up this color picker. But if I bring my cursor outside of the color picker, I can pick up actual colors on my image that I've got open, right? Or in this case, the headphones. So now I just picked up a dark red and a light red. So those are my two colors right there. So if I go to the paint bucket and I choose, because it's underneath the paint bucket is the gradient tool, and I choose the gradient tool, then I come up to the bar, the control bar here. You'll see that there's different color options that I can choose from, right? Um, there's And there's tons of them in here. If I click on here, there's different color options. But I can make up my own color options here by double-clicking on these squares there. So if I double-click on that square, now I can go into my image and I can pick up that color again. It's already showing me what color is my foreground color. And then let me do the other one, double-click. And I want this darker red, and that's going to choose those colors that are already there in the headphones. Now I can add colors to the line. Let's say I wanted to add a black to the line, right? kind of go with the black that's there and um, I can move the colors around if I would like you've got some freedom here I can move this over here I can move this over here if I decide that you know what I don't want this darker red I want to stay with a lighter red I could just take that whole color and just drop it off the line if I kept it on the line however see I brought it right back um, I can use these blenders too to kind of move the lines around in different ways so let's leave it with what I have right now. I want to talk about the different types of gradients. So the first type is a linear gradient. The farther you drag the line that you want to use to put the gradient in, the farther it'll go. Let me go back. Command Z goes back. So there's like a very tight. See, I made a real short line. So there's a linear gradient. Here's a radial gradient. It's kind of neat. Kind of does like a cast, like a light with a shadow look like almost. Um, here is, this one's kind of cool, this creates a line, and you might want to experiment a few times to see like, you know, what fits best in here, right? Well, maybe there's that one. Here's one where it does like a double line, where it kind of repeats the gradient, or could repeat the gradient if I had extra there, and then there is my diamond. So you got a lot of different options in there. I think, personally, I just like the, the standard the best, right? I kind of just like those colors. Actually, you know, change that back. I like this kind of off to the side color with the cast shadow look. That was kind of neat. Okay, so I've got my product. Here's your requirements. I've got my product. i got a simple background. You can also use a pattern in the background or a texture, but I do not want a photograph in the background. I've got my headphones. Um, I already went and I pulled my logo. So I'm just actually going to pull this entire logo into my document because one of your requirements here is to use a layer mode. And there are layer modes that can be found here that will just eliminate all the white part behind the logo there. Now, if I wanted to use the layer style on the logo then that would be more difficult because it would still show me that but that looks pretty cool in it and it got rid of so it fulfills my um, mode requirement I now I have a la layer with a mode on it and it got rid of the white background so I didn't have to deal with that another requirement of this project is a layer style uh, on the product would be one of your best choices or you can put it on the brush we're gonna add in a second so I can um, double I can go down here to the FX or if I double click right there it brings up my FX right the layer styles and let's say I wanted uh, I don't know let's put a, let's put a drop shadow on I like that that kind of sets the the red out from over there shows that bevel and emboss might make it look 3d but I don't want it to be too 3d so I'm gonna bring that in a little bit 
Um, uh, I don't like that. Let me take that back off. Remember that you have to change. You have to click on the letter. Click on the words here to change your options. If you don't click on the word, you could just be adding effects, but you don't get any options to change the effects. It would leave it the same unless you clicked on the word, right? So actually, I like this inner shadow and I like this drop shadow. I'm going to leave that as is and hit OK. So I've got those two things there. Another requirement is a brush. Let me create a new layer. I'm going to put a brush in this layer and let me grab my paintbrush. Um, what color do I want my brush to be? I don't know. Let me, actually, I think I'm going to go with a black. Um, I can also hit, let me pick up this gray. That's a good idea. I'll pick up this gray. So the eyedropper, I just picked up that gray color, became my foreground color. Here's my paintbrush. I've already downloaded some paintbrushes. I'm not going over that in this tutorial. Um, I got some cool Aurora kind of gradient, cool linear, almost looks like the waveform in a in a sound file and I'm going to use that. I'm using the brackets next to the letter P to make the brush bigger. And I just want to do like maybe like one like well-placed brush stroke right there. And let's see what that looks like. Maybe if I slide it underneath so that, yeah, that's that's kind of sharp, right? It's kind of bringing that gray out. Uh, it's bringing in some of the colors and the pink in there, uh, pinkish red, and it's kind of using all those colors there. That's pretty, pretty nice so far. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that. Okay. So I'm going to leave that as is. Now this is a perfect spot, a perfect net. And you know, a reason to put the brushes on his own layer is I, if I needed to move them, right? Let's say I wanted to move the brush. Oops, I got stuck in the layer panel. Let's say I wanted to move the brush so that it was in a different area. Oh, that's kind of neat too. I was bringing, maybe I want to add more brushes to it. Um, I can create a new layer. I could just make this, I want to make this a little bit bigger so it reaches the edges. There we go. Maybe like that. Now this gives me a great space up here to put my text. When you're thinking about the style of font that you're going to use, I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. When you're thinking about the style of font that you're going to use, you want to look at your logo. So my logo is a sans serif, pretty simplistic, um, kind of curved text. So I'm going to go with something that's fatter and bolder. I already chose my font here um, just for demonstration's sake. I'm going to go with this lemon and milk. That's my, my go-to font. I actually, I think I want my font to be in this bright pink or red color there. Um, I got my text tool. I'm going to click, and this is where your slogan would go. Or if I put my logo at the top, I can put my tagline down there. So let's say, um, um, filling the world with sound. Maybe I missed my calling for advertisement uh, purposes, but uh, let me go ahead and stretch that out. Um, I want to use this space, filling the world with sound. I want to use this as, as much as possible, right? Because this has to be emphasized. This is my text. This is the, the thing that's going to draw in my viewer. So um, I, if I leave it like that, that would be great. I would definitely put a layer, click, click, a layer style on this. Uh, maybe a nice little stroke, a black stroke, maybe a little bit thicker, right? And this is starting to fulfill all my requirements. I've got layer styles. I've got layer modes. Um, I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to this would be a new text box. This takes this part of this text box, right? Command X, oops, I'm gonna die here. Look at that. Um, Command X to cut that out. I wanna create another layer of text, Command V. If I take my eyedropper, this is an interesting thing. If I take my eyedropper and I click, oops, let me do that, hold on, I gotta highlight that. Let me highlight this text here. If I take my eyedropper, maybe I can't. All right, well, let's see what size this is because consistency is key. So let's say this text, I want this to be at 50. So I'm going to enter that number right there at 50. And then I'm going to go down here and I want this text also to be 50 as a starting point, right? I want that to be 50 as well. So that is the same. And then I can watch this. Um, alter option, click or drag. I can duplicate. Oops. Not that. Oops, I duplicated the text. Um, just the effects. Just effect and drop it on filling the world with sound. Now I can go in and kind of start... Oh, remember I got two of them. Let me just delete that one right there. And I got filling the world with sound, right? So maybe I start playing around. Maybe I do want this one to be bigger. The whole point of this piece is for you to think about moving things around. How does it fit on the page? Um, experiment with different brushes. Experiment with different, you know, areas where these different items can be with the balance in the piece, with the emphasis in the piece. Um, and getting it to be a pretty strong advertisement. Now we're going to be critiquing this, so I do not want you to flatten it yet. Leave it as a PSD and then save it. But I did want to go over the gradients and the brushes and layer styles and layer modes. So thanks for watching and have fun.